Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ellen with Headwaters Science Institute and welcome to Thursday's Science Challenge. Today we are going to hone our scientific observational skills. We are going to make a journal and start a seven-day nature observation. Visual literacy is the ability to interpret, understand, and mostly appreciate something that we're experiencing. Observations are a key skill for scientists. You need to use all of your senses, not just your eyes. So we're going to work on improving our visual literacy by making a journal and using it. Here are some things that you need to collect, so let's get started. The first thing you can do is follow this link here to print out some pages that we've made for you with some prompts for your nature observation. Now that you've got your papers, papers printed, let's take a look at what you might need for a cover. This is colored paper, something like cardstock, which is a little heavier would be better, but in a pinch a piece of colored paper will work. I scrounged around and found an old ripped up folder, so I'm going to show you how you, you could make something out of that. And then also if you have cardboard, you can cut a piece 8.5 by 11, and I found some fabric in my closet, and it looks like leather, so I thought that would be kind of cool. So I'm going to show you how to make it out of that. For tools, you're going to need an awl or something really sharp, so I found that, or this could work too for poking holes. You're going to need a big needle like this with some yarn or twine, something that's bigger than thread, so anything like that. Uh, an X-Acto knife, a ruler. I found this spray adhesive. You could also use watered down Elmer's for a fabric. And then something to work on so you don't wreck the surface that you're working on. Let's start with my folder cover. I'm going to cut it so it's the size of my paper. So it's going to be, I'm going to trim off a straight edge here. Paper cutters work great if you have one. My paper is 8.5 by 11. This is almost 12, so I'm going to trim the edge of it. So 8.5 is right there. Then I'm going to measure in five and a half inches from each side because I want to make a half inch channel down the middle that's going to be the back of my, jour my journal. So five and a half to here. Actually, I'm going to go five and a quarter and five and a quarter. I forgot it's 11, not 11 and a half. Good time for math. So five and a quarter inches from one side and five and a quarter inches from the other. And draw a straight line between the two marks. It doesn't have to be exact. It's the backing of your journal. It's going to where it's going to bend. Then take something that's hard and kind of roundy you can use the end of a pen or something like that. And you're going to score it, which means you're just going to push down really hard on it to indent it so you can bend it. So come back a little bit and then just push really hard. This thing might work good too. And then do it on both lines. Do 
just push real hard on it. And that'll get kind of a score line so that hopefully you can fold on that line. So it looks like this. For the fabric version of a journal cover, take your cardboard outside or in the garage and spray it with the spray adhesive. You want to spray the cardboard, not the fabric, because then it won't bleed through as much. You can also paint it with Elmer's, that works as well. I have the spray glue on my cardboard, so I'm going to lay the fabric over it and even it out and then flip it over and trim off the edges. We need to score it like the other one, but you need to be a little more aggressive because it's thicker cardboard. So this one measures 11 and a half. So I'm going to go five and a quarter from this side and five and a quarter from this side. And that'll give me a good half inch channel. For this one, to score it, we're just going to take our X-Acto knife and do a light pressure. You don't want to cut all the way through, you just want to cut this very top surface. So start easy, and if it doesn't cut, then make another one. It's a real light etch. And that should bend it. And now we have a fabric covered journal cover. Now that we have our covers made, let's put our pre printed observation prompts in our pages. You can use blank ones, but uh, check our link out for ones that you could also use as well. So here's the lightweight cover. I'm going to put my page on, pages on. These clips I forgot to mention are very helpful if you can clip the paper to your cover. Say, uh, paper clips will work as well. I'm going to find the center of my page. So my page is 11 inches, so a five and a half is the center. I'm going to lay my ruler down on the center page. I'm going to mark one inch increments because those are going to be the holes for my sewing. So every inch I'm making a dot. Then I'm going to take my sharp tool. If you don't have one of these, a thumbtack works as well. And I'm going to poke a hole through the mark that I made. So now I've got some holes to sew. Grabbing my needle, I'm going to go down through the center one. So you pick a hole, 
If you want to know how much yarn, do about two lengths of your book. So I'm going to come up through my backing and I'm going to leave a tail. So I'm going to leave about that much free. And you can hold on to it if you don't want it to come through. Then I'm going to go down through the next hole. It doesn't matter which direction you go. <coughs> And then I'm going to go down through the next one. So you're just going in and out. And then down through the next one. And when you get to the end, pull it through and you're just going to go back the other direction. So flip it over and go back the other direction. This is called a saddle stitch. And work your way all the way back to the other end of the page. When you get back to the center, you may have to come up twice. Actually, I'm going to stip it. I'm going to go a double stitch on this one and come up next to it. Then you need to cut your yarn about the same amount. And all you're going to do is tie these together and make a knot. Then you can take these ends and tuck them under and trim them off. And you can cut those off. And now you have a stitched book. Since I have my fabric covered journal, I'm going to show you a different stitch you can do. So here's my cardboard with the paper clipped on to the center. Same thing, in the middle of the page I'm doing one inch holes. So to start off with, go down through the bottom hole, starting at the pages, and pull it through until you have a tail, like the last time. And then flip it over and you're going to go all the way to the last hole on the outside. Pull it through so you have one long piece of thread or yarn with a tail. Then I'm going to go back up this hole and I'm going to go around the thread. This is called a dot dash stitch. So I come up and I'm going to go back down through the same hole wrapping around the thread. So it creates a little dot there. If you want more relief, if you want a bump, come up and wrap your needle twice around the yarn. So go around it. And then go down through the hole. And that'll give you a little bit more texture. Right there. And then continue on until you get to the end.
When you get to the end, you can just tie a knot. I think I'll finish this up and come back through the hole. Something to do to make it easier to bend is take your paper and crease it along that etched line in the cardboard. And that'll make it much more flexible. Another thing you can do to spruce it up is add beads into this line when you string it in the first time and each knot will hold the bead in place. Have fun with it, you can get really creative. Now that you have a journal, let's go do some observations. Plan on spending 15 to 30 minutes in your sit spot or where you've chosen to observe from. You'll, not, you'll want a good chunk of time to do your observing. You'll need your journal with your pages in it, a pencil, and if you have a animal or a plant identifying book, this is really helpful. So let's go get started. I'm going to choose this as my sit spot where I'm going to observe. I have a fairly deep carnivorous forest right next to it and I also have some apple trees nearby. Now that I've done my three minute quiet time, I'm going to start writing in my journal. We've broken down the pages into different subjects, plants and animals and ecosystems, so you can write your observations on each of those pages. It's really important to write down the date, the weather, the temperature, if you have a thermometer, and the location. Anything you see or hear or smell, write it down as an observation. You can also use this side of the page to draw pictures. Pictures are just as good as words, and you can label them with different colors. This will help you for identifying something later when you want to look it up in your book. So sit back and enjoy and see what you can find. I had 25 lovely minutes sitting out there and observing, and this is what I came up with. I wrote some notes and drew a sketch. Despite seeing a few insects, mostly I heard and saw birds. So I was expecting to hear my mountain chickadee that I'm really familiar with, but I didn't hear it at all. And I heard another call that I didn't recognize. So when I caught a glimpse of the bird, I sketched it really quick here. And when I came back, I looked in my book and I found out, I think it was one of these flycatchers here. So I wrote that down. I counted the birds and I saw more flycatchers than anything else. So here we have suggested you come up with three research questions you could ask. I wrote down where are the mountain chickadees, when are there more birds, morning or evening, and then I had a question about ants. So I think I'm going to do a research investigation on birds. The next step is to go to the page that says choose a research topic. My topic is going to be birds, and my question is, when do you see more birds in the morning or in the evening? Now I need to design my research project. How am I going to track my findings? I am going to say that I will sit 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening counting and identifying my birds. My data sheet will look something like this, where I put down my date, the time of day, what type of bird I see, and how many I've seen, and then any kind of notes that I noticed. 
The next part is the fun part. We've given you sheets for seven days of observations. Make sure your procedures are the same for each day and write down everything that you observe. By the end, you're going to have a really good set of data. For my question, I might write my data down like this, where I put down how many birds I saw in the morning and in the evening. And I'm also planning on counting what type of bird I'm going to see in the morning and the evening. When you're done collecting your information, look at the graph in the back of the journal and see if you can plot your data on that graph. If you want to take it another step further, try taking that data and put it into a computer-generated graph like this. This helps people visualize your information easier than numbers. Good luck! If you have five or seven days of data and observations, please send us a picture of it. We love this kind of stuff. And now that you're a scientist, go out and ask some other questions and see what you can find out. We need you more than ever. Go have fun with it and see you next week.